Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top-notch real estate agent and support pro-life causes. Go to realestateforlife.org to learn more. Getting ready to buy or sell a home? Do you want to help support pro-life organizations? Then you need Real Estate for Life. Get a top May the holy names of Jesus may be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the first class solemnity we celebrate in England today, the feast of St. George, the patron of England. St. George was born in Cappadocia of noble Christian parents. After the death of his father, he went with his mother into Palestine, and there having a considerable estate which fell to her son, he was, he was strong, St. George, and embraced the profession of a soldier and was made a tribune or colonel in the army. Because of his courage or conduct, he was soon preferred to high stations by the Emperor Diocletian, who even advanced him to the grade of tribune. In the 19th year of Diocletian's reign, we turn the clock back to the year 303 AD. An imperial decree was issued and published everywhere by this emperor, ordering the churches, the Christian churches, to be raised to the ground and the scriptures destroyed by fire, and also giving notice that those Christian place in places of honor would lose their places and domestic staff if they continued to profess their faith would be deprived of their liberty. Soon afterwards, other decrees arrived in rapid succession, ordering even the, the elders or the presidents of the churches in every place should all be the first committed to, in prison and then coerced by every possible means into pagan sacrifice. When the Prince of Darkness waged war against the Christian religion, Saint George, this great saint, who was only 20 years of age as a soldier, laid aside the marks of his dignity, threw off his commission and posts, and complained to the emperor personally and individually himself of the severities of these bloody edicts. He was immediately cast into prison, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and tried, first by promises and then tortured with great cruelty. But nothing would shake his constancy. The next day he was led through the city and beheaded. He was crowned as a martyr on the 23rd of April. This is today, the anniversary. St. George, by legend, is called the slayer of the dragon. St. George is he who stood firm without fear to defend the truth before the Roman emperor. St. George refused, in short, to worship to the pagan idols. He was thus rooted in Christ, as we read in the Holy Scriptures today. Jesus said in the Gospel of St. John, we have just read, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same beareth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. For without me, you can do nothing. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask whatever you will, and it shall be done unto you. He was thus rooted in the vine, and abode and his abode was the Lord. He stripped himself bare for Jesus Christ. This must be our lesson to today. Saint George plunged himself into the thick of the battle, the spiritual battle, an ardent soldier for Christ. Saint George was also consumed, consumed with the fire of the Holy Spirit. Let us not only admire the courage of this fighter in heaven's army, but also let us today, in these most perilous times, follow his example. 
Let us die a glorious martyrdom with St. George. Look at this wicked world that surrounds us now, drenched in sin. This surrounds us Catholics, threatening to devour us. We are living in the age of ingratitude, which Our Lady tells us about in the messages of Fatima. Sin is spiraling out of control. We are living in the most immoral and wicked world with all its errors. Look around at all the pagans in the world, not part of the vine Jesus Christ. Look around and see all the souls who have lost their faith in Jesus Christ, even those baptized Catholics who have abandoned all the truths of the faith. These are in apostasy. Look around at the world for those souls, even Catholics again, who pick and choose the truths of the faith they wish to believe and follow. We call these cafeteria Catholics. They are in heresy. And even if they were made aware of their position, they would probably say today, so what, in their indifferentism, not wanting to give up a certain vice. And see those who have decided to uproot and deny the true successor of the vine, St. Peter, the Vicar of Christ, and are thus, by definition, schismatic. What can we learn today, then, brothers and sisters in Christ? Look again at the consequences, then, of this tragic loss of faith. Are we not living in the most evil time? We are not just locked down by this virus, but locked down by the world's sins and overpowered by this culture of death, which appears to be the dragon which is invincible. Roaring around like huge lions, there are these intrinsic moral evils let loose by the pits of hell. We know what these are, and we could give a homily on each one of these. Contraception, pornography, the LGBT ideology, gender theory, homosexuality, same-sex marriage, brain death, assisted suicide, stem cell research and destruction, euthanasia, and finally abortion, which is not just the moral evil of our times, but we can say abortion is the moral evil of all times. Abortion, the number one cause of death globally. And the Lord said to Cain, where is thy brother Abel? And he answered, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said to him, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth to me from the earth. Yes, we are our brother's keeper. Here in this British Isle, cast our minds back to that fateful day when abortion was illegalized. The bill was backed by the government, and after a heated debate, it was passed on October 27, 1967, and came into effect the following year, April 27, 1968. If you don't know, this was the first time that mass abortion was made law, and how many nations have now followed suit. Next Monday will be the 52nd anniversary of this dreadful day in the history of this country. How many sins against our Creator, Lord of life? Can we say that this is a law, abortion, when it contradicts God's natural law written into our hearts? It is not normal in any age or any society to kill an unborn child in the womb, where today the child is fighting for survival. Let us beg mercy for all those in the chamber of the, this time who signed into action this law, including the monarchy, including the monarchy, because we hold, because God will hold them all accountable for the consequences of these abominable sins against life. We cry, as Jesus did on the cross, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. 56 million annual abortions in this country, in this barbarism and modern-day Holocaust. The mountains of burnt ash piles of incinerated unborn babies are crying out now for justice. 
What about another threat to our faith? What about the threat of Islam here in the UK? Do we realize that the population of this country has remained static, deliberately at around 60 million for many years, yet the number of native of UK children has dropped dramatically? The average number of children born to women, known as the total fertility rate, is 1.7 in this country. The birth rate in England and Wales, measured as a population proportion of the total population, hit an all-time new low in the year 2018, according to the Office of National Statistics. Someone reminded me recently that now in this country there is nearly as many Polish children born as native births. For the Catholic Church, this is a good situation because many of these Polish are practicing the faith and also we have had a great influx in the last period of people from Nigeria and the Philippines. But this is a bad situation for the country, this low birth rate, why? Because the birth rate among the UK Muslim families is around three per family. In other words, what we are trying to say here now is in the future, without realizing it, in the blink of an eye, this country will be Islamic. What about the clergy? How many have the courage to speak for the truth in this country, on this Feast of St. George? We are living here in the end times foreseen by the seer of the apparition of Our Lady of Good Success in Ecuador in the 17th century. The seer was a Franciscan conceptionist nun called Mother Mariana de Jesus Torres, who as a victim soul offered to, to sacrifice and do penance for our times. She says in one of her, of her prophecies that he who should speak seasonably will remain silent. Is not, this not related to the prelates of our time? She continued, in those times the atmosphere will be saturated with the spirit of impurity which, like a filthy sea, will engulf the streets and public places with incredible license. Innocent will scarcely be found in children, and modesty in women. Unbridled passions will give way to a total corruption of customs, because Satan will reign through the Masonic sects, targeting the children in particular to ensure general corruption. Why is nobody speaking out now in this confusion in the church? Is it due to fear or perhaps Rome has lost the faith? How many in the hierarchy who should be protecting the family and speaking clearly now in these times of peril are living in deep darkness and cannot see the light of the truth? Many are they now who do not believe in Jesus Christ. Look at the root of the doctrinal crisis in the church today. Is it not stemming from the impurity of the clergy that has gone out of control? What are we to do then? What is the remedy, dear brothers and sisters in Christ? The answer, the answer is staring us in our face today. It is simple. We must imitate St. George and remain in the vine Jesus Christ by asking for or accepting a gift of martyrdom. Martyrdom is the supreme witness given to the truth of the faith. It, be, it means bearing witness even unto death. The martyr bears witness to Christ who died and rose, to whom he is united in charity. He bears witness to the truth of the faith and of the Christian doctrine. He endures death through an act of fortitude. Do not fear then, do not lose heart at all these realities surrounding the Catholic, Catholic Church trying to destroy it. These attacks seem relentless. Do not fear or lose hope. Christ has already won the war, but we must participate as Christians in the battle. Do not fear, but be holy like St. George. Two interesting episodes also in the life of St. George. The Emperor Diocletian was trying 
to corrupt him when he decided for Christ. So he sent um, an, a woman in, a beautiful woman, into his cell. But in the morning, the woman had had a conversion through the holiness of St. George, and the, this lady herself was also martyred for the faith. Also, Diocletian, in his so-called wisdom, tried to poison St. George. When he presented the cup, St. George made the sign of the cross. He drank the poison without any effect. Noticing this, they tried to tie the hands of St. George behind his back, being unable to make the sign of the cross. He said, which side of the cup should I drink from? Should it be from the top, the bottom, the left, or the right? Thus making the sign of the cross. Look at these great examples also who imitate St. George. We have through three beautiful examples now of mart martyrdom. The first one is a contemporary of St. George, St. Philomena, someone who died not only in the same year as St. George, 303 AD, but was also decapitated and also died for the faith for Jesus Christ at the age of 13 years of age, and also at the hands of Diocletian, the emperor. She was rooted in Christ, in the vine. She had made a promise as a Greek princess to be the spouse of Jesus. When her parents were asking Diocletian for peace terms, he became so infatuated with her that he demanded her hand in marriage. She stood firm after brutal tortures and ascended to heaven as a virgin martyr. Wind the clock forward to 1945, the communists taking over Eastern Europe. They came into a place in Croatia, in Bosnia, called Sedoki Brijeg. This is, the, this is a place where we have the Franciscan convent. On the 7th of February, 1945, the communist soldiers arrived at the church in the friary and said, to the friars, God is dead, there is no God, there is no Pope, there is no church and there is no need of you, you must go into the world and work. Many of the Franciscan priests were teachers. The communists ordered them to remove their habits. The Franciscans refused. One angry soldier took the crucifix and threw it on the floor and said, now you can choose either life or death. Each and every one of the Franciscans then knelt down one by one, embraced the crucifix, held it to their hearts, saying, You are my God and my all. They sang the litany of Our Lady as they were being killed. Thirty Franciscans were taken out and slaughtered and their bodies burned with gasoline in a nearby cave. One of the things interesting about this martyrdom also is the consequence of this martyrdom. There is 26,000 inhabitants, inhabitants now living in this town, and there is no divorce. No divorce in this town, why? Because when the people get married, they first embrace the cross and through the fruits of this martyrdom. Wind the clock forward again to 2015, we have a martyrdom of 20 Egyptian Copts who were martyred by Islamic fundamentalists. They were marched on the beach, 20 of these workers from uh, Libya, and as they were walking on the beach, each one of them had an executioner behind them. They were all dressed in orange, and they were all decapitated. But there was a non-Christian at the end of the line from Guyana in Africa, who was a not a Christian. They asked him at the end, would he denounce, had he any faith in Jesus Christ? And did he want to die? And he said, I, my God is their God. He thus was killed and decapitated and he died a martyr for Jesus Christ. Many have the fear of this gift of martyrdom. In conclusion, we can now offer a new way not perhaps a red martyrdom where one sheds the blood for Christ in a violent way, even though this may be the lot for many Catholics in the times ahead. 
or not the white martyrdom, which is perhaps as valuable now, where one can suffer continually, day by day, as a witness for Christ, especially in this secular world. No, but we offer a new way, a new martyrdom. What about, dear brothers and sisters in Christ today, what about a Marian martyrdom, a blue martyrdom, a martyrdom rooted in the Immaculate Heart of Mary and thus rooted firmly in the vine, Jesus Christ? He is the vine, we are the branches, but Mary forms this joint. To be a martyr for Mary then means being consecrated to her and making a firm decision of the will to actively help her as the corridemptix at the foot of the cross. This does not mean that your crosses will become any lighter. In fact, you will possibly carry an even heavier cross. But in a Marian way, you will be given the grace to offer up these pains and sweet blue roses to soothe the most beautiful heart of the Queen of Paradise. This is the way home then, the way home to paradise is through Mary. If Jesus is the vine, can we not be the blue branches of Mary? To die a martyr in Mary, we can contemplate for all eternity. This is the way to imitate St. George today and save our souls and to save our country, England, the diary of Mary. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.